Question, what's your favorite AIDS joke? AIDS joke? AIDS joke? AIDS jokes? I don't know any AIDS jokes. <laughs> Sorry. What's next? I guess you just put your dick in and explode. Cause I was watching TV, listening, trying to see what you had to do to get AIDS. You were fucking a chimp up the arse. This episode, we're talking about humor and coping. I've made a few slip-ups and thrown AIDS out as funny, but it wasn't funny. And I felt like an ass afterwards because I was being an ass. Sometimes when you don't know how to deal with things, you joke about it. Because we're 98.6% genetically identical to a chimpanzee, it was able to be passed to humans. And the first human contracted AIDS when he was chopping up um, chimp meat and cut his finger. Although that's the excuse I'd have given. <laughs> You'd have to come up with something, wouldn't you? You go to the doctor and you go, oh, I feel terrible, doc. The doctor goes, well, I'm not surprised. You go, You're the first human to contract AIDS. Is that bad? <laughs> Can't be. I don't know that I have a favorite AIDS joke. It's something from Family Guy. <laughs> you know? Family Guy is so tasteless and <laughs> so terrible. When you say USA, I just say hooray. And if you're not from here, God's gonna hunt you down and give you AIDS USA. I just, I love that show because they just hate on everyone. Working with kids now, now doing Arts Inside Out and working with kids in Africa who, again, didn't have a choice. Most of them contracted HIV, not through their own choices. They're dealing with life and death, dealing with disease and illness. They're dealing with what's happened to them up until this point. Where is food going to come from? Where my, is my education going to come from? What's going to happen if I don't get education? Like these are all things that are kind of givens in America to an extent. So they're living in that world, which is why the first time I went to Africa, I realized I had all these notions of, oh, we're going to go teach them theater uh, skills, a skill set. They're going to master this skill set. And I felt like I was failing, and then I realized, no, they're having a blast. They're having fun. They're, ha they're laughing, and they're enjoying themselves. And maybe in this moment, in this place right now, that's the biggest gift in the world, is to be able to give them that. What was the defining thing that made you feel like you wanted to do work in HIV and AIDS? Okay, so, uh, when I... Well, um, my dad has AIDS, and we have a complicated relationship. I love my dad, he's wonderful. Um, and I was away at college. It was literally like I was on the way to the airport and he told me this. So I went back to Juilliard, this information that I had that no one else had, and a relationship with my dad where it's, I didn't know how to process that information. I didn't know how to help. So I did a fundraiser. <laughs> I did a, the first World AIDS Day benefit performance at Juilliard. And it suddenly was a part of my life. And it always had felt that way, but now it was my dad, not, not a playwright or not a documentary where I'm watching people. So he came with us the first year that we did Arts Inside Out. I wanted him to, I was hoping that would be something. We never talked about it or we never, but I was hoping that that experience of being in that place for that reason, with these kids who are being stigmatized and ostracized and dealing with the fact that they have HIV and AIDS and that he would become more okay with it, so I don't think he is. I was hoping that my dad and I could be at that in that place at the same time. 
that was that was when it became personal to me, and um, and I wanted to do something other than just donate some money or walk. All right. What's your favorite AIDS joke? God, it's an old one. Because <laughs> I don't really think we tell AIDS jokes anymore in the United States in my community. But my favorite one is, you know, what's the hardest thing about telling your family that you have HIV? Um, uh, to, trying to convince your mother that you're Haitian. That's really time specific. Because you, you may recall, I'm 49. You may recall that at the beginning it was like Haitians and hemophiliacs and people who use drugs and, and gay people. So it was a coming out joke and that's I guess the, my favorite joke you know I was I've been thinking a lot about AIDS all right because you know that's been in the news you know I tried to ignore it when it first came out you know what I mean because I was watching TV listening trying to see what you had to do to get AIDS and I listened I said well hey you know I think I'm cool you know I ain't never made love to a gay bisexual intravenous drug user from Haiti What's your favorite AIDS joke? AIDS joke? AIDS joke. Uh, there is a, a man who tries to rape the, the woman. Mm. And the woman, uh, of course, she's very scared. And she tried to, and she, she tells the, the man, don't do that, don't do that. I have AIDS. And he answers, so do I. <laughs> Ginny Connors under the shower. Somebody saw Ginny Connors and he sees Cox on the Cox has a tattoo. AIDS. Oh, I say, oh, wait. It's not AIDS. When I'm very in shape, it's Adidas. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> One of the funniest things that I heard, or uh, was funny, but it was humorous things that incorporated HIV, it was this old um, Robert Townsend special on HBO. Uh, <laughs> there's this big long line, waiting room, Every, everybody's sitting there, mostly guys are sitting there, and they're tapping their feet and they're nervous, waiting, waiting for their results, waiting to get those results from the doctor. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> the doctor comes out and calls Mr. Whomever up. And says, I got syphilis! Yeah! Oh, I only got syphilis, my man. <laughs> yes! Oh, thank God! Walking past all the other people in the waiting room, everybody's celebrating. He's giving high fives. Yes, it's not HIV. Yes! But I mean, there's some truth to that, especially at the, I think it was early 90s when that came out. But there was some truth to that. I mean, um, it's a generational thing, I know. I mean, prior to that, things that scare people were like, uh, I got, uh, I got that itch, I got crabs, I got this and that. You know, just stuff that you go, oh man, now you're a man, you can go get a shot and you're good. But that whole idea that, that now there's something, I think Eddie Murphy did another joke about it, yeah. In the good old days, you get gonorrhea, your dick hurt, go get a shot, clear it right up. <laughs> then they came out with herpes, you keep that shit forever like luggage. Now they got AIDS, that just kills motherfuckers. I say, what's next? I guess you just put your dick in and explode. It, it used humor, I think, to identify 
just the, the dread, the fear that, that anyone had in being diagnosed uh, with HIV. And it was also kind of tied into the perception that HIV was a death sentence. Do you have a favorite AIDS joke? Hmm. Favorite AIDS joke. I will say, have you seen um, <laughs> Team America? Yeah. <laughs> when they do the whole thing about lease, and they're like, everyone Everyone has, has AIDS. AIDS. really funny and even if i'd like heard one i wouldn't be like oh that's my favorite one <laughs> you know i love that one it's particularly mean yeah it's funny because some people actually do have a favorite age joke which is weird well you know I, and i don't think that should necessarily be judged because people have different ways of dealing with things and humor is actually for me maybe not with age specifically but um you know when things are really shitty i do tend to turn to hu to humor so I never went for psychological, what, so, yeah, psychological treatment. It was in the 1995, you can imagine. We were just told that there's this, you're going to die, and that's it. Uh, and the doctors never even recommended that I should, I should go for counseling. So for me, um, the, the healing force for me was, you know, writing. Mm. So I wrote down my feelings. You know, I would write, cry on that piece of paper. Keeping, you know, keeping a diary, a journal for myself really helped me heal. So whatever I wrote, I put on, on, on paper at that point, became a healing mechanism. Yeah, mechanism for me and a coping mechanism for that matter. I believe that once you put something on paper, there's, you know, some, there could be you know, forces out there that might make your story to be read by somebody else and that story could be encouraging yeah. to, to others. What's your favorite AIDS joke? I don't think I've ever heard one. <laughs> I mean, really, I don't think I've ever heard one. Fair enough. I think it was like an Oscar Wilde quote, but it was like, don't live your life angry because that's not a life to live. Mm -hmm. And that really had resonance with me. I could waste my life being miserable, stuck up in this 500 square foot apartment in Rockwall, Texas, and not go out and be a hermit and hate kids and blah, blah, blah. I could, I could do that very easily. But I could also make a life of what I have left. I'm 32. I'm fucking 32. <laughs> Question. Um, what is your favorite age joke? I don't have uh, an age joke. You're sitting where my school friend who died in 1994 and he was sitting there. I was going off and saying, saying something like, you know, how, from a scientific point of view, how remarkable the AIDS virus was. And I was saying that in some ways I admired it. It's incredibly sophisticated and subtle and it has all these 
little ways of undoing the immune system. It's a really sophisticated piece of machinery. And I made the mistake and I used the word beautiful. And then I caught myself and I said, sorry, I shouldn't use that word. He said, no, no, I understand what you mean. Um, so um, we, you know, it's a, it's from a virological point of view, it's, it really is the Mercedes of viruses. But it's no joke. I can't say whether it's right or wrong to make light of this pandemic because I'm not a big fan of placing much in the categories of right or wrong. Depending on where you are emotionally and the intention behind your actions, the context, you know, all this plays a role into whether a joke is cruel or some form of coping. Humor can be a way of saying what nobody else wants to say. Shine a light where nobody wants to look. I guess what I wonder the most is, where is that line? <laughs>